praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Praise oh, it's a wonderful day, and you are welcome to the miracle service of the Jesus Kabod Ministries, JCM for sure, being streamed from the International Headquarters, Holy Ghost Cathedral. And as you have heard, it's going to be miracles all the way. And the miracles will not be restricted or limited to your physical ailment, that's your physical diseases. Today, the Holy Spirit has indicated that he's going to address marital issues, marriage, marital, both for the single and the marriage. So look forward to the hand of God coming upon you in the area of your marriage. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we are praying. The name that's above every name. He who died on the cross, and took our sins and our infirmities, our sicknesses and disease away, that by his stripes we were healed. I pray that the Holy Spirit shall stretch forth his hand towards my dear viewers, brethren, as they listen and as they view this program, that the hand of God shall meet them at the point of their need and their faith in Jesus. I pray that they release their faith as they hear the word before even I pray about it. They will be healed by the listening to the word of God. In Jesus' name, we call it down. Amen. Amen. And as I indicated, God is going to minister in the area of healings for your marriages, whether you are single or not. But to the married, the Bible says, to the unmarried also. And it says that to the unmarried and the widows, that's what the Bible says, that they can stay unmarried to the singles. They can stay or marry. But if they cannot control themselves, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. That's First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8 and 9. And that's God's advice to us, to the single, to the bachelors and spinsters, and then to the widows, those who have once married, but they... Their spouse have left them, not that left them uh, what we talk about divorce, but talking about the fact that their spouse have left them, they've died. You could be even divorced. You are in for the miracle of the Lord. In your single state, that you will not be lonely. For the Bible says that it's not good for man to be alone. He doesn't want you to be lonely. And God is creating a way. And so we're going to pray. For those of you who are not yet married, every obstacle, except for your character, if it's your character, then you better repent and put things right in your life. But there are spiritual obstacles too that come, generational curses too that come your way. And the hand of God is going to break them in the name of Jesus Christ. And there are some families that it's very difficult to get married, both male and female. And there are spiritual obstacles. There are covenants that precede you as you listen to me, that are from your ancestry. And they might have made covenant with demons, devils, wanting something from them. And they had to pay a price for quid quo pro, you know, consideration, something in return for something. There's no free lunch, as we say in this world. Legally, you must return something for something. Then the contract becomes legal, solid. And your ancestry might have done so. They might have gone for money. They might have gone for influence, fame, and the likes. And then they had to pay a price to those supposed deities, demons. And then they may demand marry to the girls in the family down the line and happen to be a girl. So that's what is happening to you. And there are certain things we ourselves also personally enter into agreement with these demonic powers. And when we enter, it's a black covenant that we have covenant with them. And you have to pay your part. And you go for many things. And you said you don't, you don't care. Well, that's just what you want. And the fetish priest and that occultic priest also will tell you that that deity or demon he or she is worshipping 
That's the price is making of you. And because you are desperate, you want influence, you want marriage, you want this and that, because you say, no big deal. You might have gotten it. But then those demons are making their demand. And their demand is in the area of marriage, that they will get married to you. Memes get married to a lot of people. Memes get married even to a lot of men. You see, mermaids normally are in the female type of demons and they make sure that they frustrate you. You see the spirit that come to sleep with you during the night, in your dreams and the like. And you are married to them. And I can see some wearing rings, rings that are spiritual. And if it's so, it will be very difficult for any man to come your way. Any man that comes your way, those demons want them to get off your back, lest they kill. And some do not know, they don't see anything about it, but they just go off. You meet a man, you start walking with a man, and the man just abruptly stops seeing you. And you wonder what you've done. You've not done nothing. It's just that a spiritual marriage, and it will be working today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that which has come from your ancestry, and that which has come from your own life. In the name, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, the name that's above every name, the de- name that makes them possible, possible, I command you, foul spirit, you haven't created any human being before. You have no right. And by the authority of the blood of Jesus, break loose your hold over the one I'm looking at in the name of Jesus. And I said, I break that covenant in the name of Jesus. And now, dear, dear friends, say that in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus I, break every covenant I break every covenant that my ancestry, that my ancestry have had, had with any demon, with any demon that, has that has come upon me in my generation, in my generation stopping, me stopping me from getting married. From getting married. I I accept Jesus as my Lord, my personal Savior, and by His blood to break every covenant, demonic covenant, whatever type of blood covenant, by my ancestry, in having negative effect upon me. In Jesus' name I pray. Now I pray for you. You who personally too, you have been running around and being involved in certain things and you don't know what has happened to you. I pray in the name of Jesus, say that, forgive me, Lord, forgive me, Lord for entering into this covenant for into this because covenant. I wanted something else. I wanted something and, that else. That and that was the price that was demanded. Now that I want to be legally married, these demons are obstructing me. Dear Lord Jesus, Jesus, help me. Help me. me. I pray for you. He will definitely. The Bible says that if you confess that Jesus is your Lord, he will break every other lordship over your life. And he is there. He is the supreme one. So when he oversees you, no devil, no human being, no government, nothing will be able to take you out of his hand or out of the hand of his father. Now, I am praying those of you who people have pronounced curses upon you, that is for stalling you from getting married in the name of Jesus. Every tongue that has been set against you, according to the Bible, Isaiah 54, we condemn that tongue in the name of Jesus Christ. Every relationship we have entered, whether you were working with a person as a boyfriend or girlfriend, or whether you were once married to the person and then there was bad blood, you divorced and there were curses brought upon you in Jesus. I condemn that tongue in Jesus. The tongue that said you will never get married in the name of Jesus. I condemn that tongue, the pronouncement in Jesus' name. I break that curse over your life. In Jesus' name, I call it down. Say amen to that. Amen. Now I'm going to pray for the married. The married we get into trouble past relationships as well as present relationship we get to trouble and many times the past relationship you might not have married the man or the woman you were living as 
uh, worldly people and you were just uh, having, you were caught, not even caught in, you were sleeping together. And that brings you into bond with that person. And now there is what we call soulish attachment. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Every man you have slept with, leave something in you and take something away from you. Every woman you have slept with, leave something in you and take something out of you. In the name of Jesus. And that is having an effect upon your life and having an effect upon your present marriage in the name of Jesus. I pray that God will forgive you and wash you and cleanse you. Say, dear God, forgive me dear God, for my past me. mistakes. In Jesus, name. in Jesus' name, and wash me, and wash with, the me. Blood of Jesus. with the precious blood of Jesus, and give me a new beginning. Give me a new beginning. For, you say, For you say, if we confess our sin, confess you, are our sin. you are faithful and just to forgive us all our sins, all our and cleanse us from all, from all unrighteousness. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name. I, pray. I pray. I'll be praying for you also. In Jesus' name. Now, you are married, properly married. But there are obstacles. You come from different backgrounds, different experiences, different family line, different blood line. And you cannot come together in the spirit to be of one flesh. And they are fighting all along today. I've had experience. of people married, even the very day that they were married together, the presents that were given to them had been the bane of their marriages up to now. There was this instance, I was telling my boy at that time, that my wife and mother, there was this newly married couple, and they were at each other's throne, right from the honeymoon and fighting. They fight to the point that the woman even may take a switch blade to fight with a man. And my wife with a friend went to pray with them. And God opened the eyes of my wife to see the problem that there was the gift of a Paris bowl that was given to them. And they were in their cabinet. And these two Paris bull, at 12 midnight, 12 midnight, they jump together and hit one another. The moment it happened, then you see that the couple start fighting. This is a true story. Involves my wife. She was a witness. She was the one God used to deal with the situation. The moment is 12 o'clock, the two Paris bull would jump together and hit the other. Then that means spiritually, that was what was done against the couple when they presented this. So one of the parents represented the groom and the other represented the wife. They will fight and fight and fight, not knowing this. That's the beginning of their marriage. And then my wife told the friend, she went with that. You watch something. And said, what is it? What is it? I said, you just watch and call the couple that see to it. At 12 midnight, then the Paris boat jumped together. They started fighting. And my wife said, uh, let me carry these two Paris boats and go and break them outside. The friend even was saying, oh, what is it about? But my wife said, you come along with me. And she went and, and prayed, anointed the Paris boat, broke them. Then all of a sudden, they stopped fighting. And they came to themselves and they wonder what was happening and she told them this is the cause and since then they've been at peace for years and years now and there was this one also at the at the at the inception or the the the, the blessing of the marriage it was a night gown that was given to the woman and the woman whenever she puts on the night gown she become crazy mad fighting with the man, taking knives, kill the man and the like. 
it also involved my wife at the same time. She had to deal with the situation. When the woman came to her, she said, ah, what is happening? What is happening? They told her, this is it. And they had to burn the nightgown. All these things happen. And I pray that if that is your case in Jesus' name, by the hand of God, it shall be broken right now. The same figure that helped those two set of couples will help you right now. It was the finger of God, not the finger of my wife. In Jesus' name, she called the name of Jesus. The name, that's above every name. And I'm calling that name in Jesus' name, that those demons, those parts be broken in Jesus' name. Any object that I've been given to you, any object you yourself have brought to your house that is causing the marriage, you do not understand. You do things well one towards the other but then when the thing clicks then you start fighting they will take you will become angry or uh, uh, unnecessary anger that cannot be restrained in jesus name i command those demons to leave and i pray that that object in your house or whatever is buried be broken they are called the fire of the holy ghost to burn it in jesus mighty name i call it down amen, amen. and i pray for you you also were not responsible in the house as a man. I pray that there will be repentance in your heart. And I pray that the blindness in your eyes shall be, the scale will be removed right now as I'm praying in Jesus' name. For I said, God is in the business of healing marriages. That's the miracle he is doing today in Jesus' name. And I pray that God will open your eyes, that you come back home. You come to your senses. You take off your wife. You take off your children in the demon. You will not spend money on outside the house and unnecessary spending to side chicks and others without taking care of your family. In Jesus' name, I call it down. Amen. And I, I pray for you also as a wife in Jesus' name that you will be responsible in Jesus' name and not be involved in extra marital activities as well, sleeping behind your husband as well in Jesus' name, being greedy and not be content in the house. In Jesus' name, I call that the hand of God shall touch you and deliver you. To the married, the Bible says, don't defraud each other. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 to 5. Don't defraud each other. That's it. You see, it's a walk as one flesh. Husband loving the wife and sacrificing for her as Christ loved the church. You love and sacrifice. That's what the word says. You have read it, but you are not able to take hold of it. But I pray today that the Holy Spirit will help you take You have revelation knowledge and the epigenesis of the, the word of truth in this area shall be incarnated in your heart. And he said it gives you a standard. The standard is that Jesus loved the church, which happened to be his bride, to the extent that he was able to take care of the wrinkle and the spot and the blemish of the wife. We as human beings, you know our limitations and weakness, yet Christ loves us. He laid down his life for us on the cross and in hell for us. He paid the price. And I pray Jesus says that do the same, do the same for your wife. As a man, do the same for your wife. Sacrifice for her. She said, wake up and say, sacrifice for her. He said, don't exasperate her with uh, unnecessary uh, yelling at her and not being appreciative. In Jesus' name, you find it hard as a natural man, but you are no more a natural man. You are a new creature in Jesus' name. But let the Holy Spirit help you right now in Jesus' name. And he said, the wife respecting and submitting to the husband in one union, Ephesians 5, 21 to 23, in the name of Jesus, you find it difficult. You submit to every other man except your own husband. No. He said, let everyone have his own wife and let everyone have his own husband. In the name of Jesus. And I pray that the spirit of arrogance and rebellion in you shall be removed. In the name of Jesus, the hand of God shall touch you and make you every which whole in Jesus' name. And pronounce that love and respect and submission to one another shall be brought into your life. In Jesus' mighty name, we call it and say amen to that. Amen. Say amen to that. Amen. And I pray for every other mental and physical amen that you have. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. I rebuke blind spirit, leave. Deaf and dumb spirit, leave right now. Cancers fall off in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I pray that every growth shall vanish from your life. In Jesus. Every pain shall leave in Jesus Christ precious thing, I call it down and put your hand on top of it and say that every demon that is harassing me, I command you in Jesus' name to leave. And I pray 
that by the stripe of Jesus, I be made every we told. I declare that I receive my healing right now. In Jesus' name, I call it down. Amen. This is the word of God to you. This is the word of deliverance and healing. This is the miracle power of God. You can write us as you see information down. If you go to our website too and tell us your testimony, your story, your victory story. Not that you are a victim, but you are a victor in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my life and be my Lord. Lord, and personal Savior, and personal Savior. I, surrender I surrender to you in Jesus name, in Jesus name. I, pray. I pray you make me born again, me born again. I, thank I thank you for bringing me to the Father me and, making me, and making me his child I am free I am, free. I am saved, I am saved. Amen. Amen fill me with your Holy Spirit Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Now I pray for you, those who have received Jesus right now. I pray that the hand of God shall break every hold, every part of the enemy, not only for your marriage, but your whole life, entire life in Jesus, your coming and going out, and the works of your hand, everything in Jesus' name, and your children, all those under you in, in your household in Jesus shall be made every white with whole and that you prosper and then you walk closer to the Lord in Jesus name we call it down amen, amen. now I'll tell you for spiritual exercise you must be involved daily it's your personal duty your response to do daily the first one is that is the word of God give the word of God first place in your life let it be food it's food for your inner man your spirit man feed on the word of God daily every day every day give God time the time of the day in Jesus name he will talk to you and feed you and power through his word his word is spirit and life it's not literature then number two you communicate with God by you talking to him in prayer and the only name that God hears is the name of Yeshua HaMashiach Jesus the Christ so you approach the father he's now your father you are his child and but you go in the name of your eldest brother that the firstborn of Jesus Christ the Lord of the Lord Father, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, and pray to God through him. God will hear you. You answer every prayer of your through that name. For Jesus himself has said, Father, I thank you that you always hear me. He hears him always. Then number three, you attend the Bible-believing church with people of like mind. They are born again, and you are now also born again. If you are born again, that means they are your siblings. You are siblings in Christ. God is your father. And all of them are your brothers and sisters. And you too, you are a brother or you are a sister to them all. Then they will build you up. You are a baby in Christ. Then there are mature people in Christ there. Just like any natural family. We have elders, we have children being born. They will, they will nurture you, they will train you, they will teach you, and they will comfort you and direct your path with you. Grow up to be a matured Christian. And attention. Church service not only on Saturday, be regular on Sunday, be regular midweek services, all the teaching services as well as prayer meeting, fasting times, and then week long programs during the month or so attend regularly. Don't miss church. Don't miss church. Then number four, you tell others about the saving knowledge of Jesus. We call it soul winning or witnessing in Jesus' name. Bring them to Christ in Jesus' name. If you have nothing to say as a newborn, you just bring them and invite them to church and others will. But as you grow, you will learn how to lead people in, to Christ outside the church building and then you bring them over. In Jesus' name, we call it down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We thank God now. I will sign off by telling you that the joy of the Lord be your strength. The joy of the Lord be your strength. And the peace of God. Now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you even now and forevermore. Shout Amen. Amen. Amen.